looks like we're going to um, get started here now. Um, Sarah, thank you for joining us today. I know you've had a long day of travel and training. Um, can you just walk us through what this week has been like um, in preparation for tomorrow's match? Yeah, uh, it was nice to be home for a couple of days uh, and get some preparation in. And we trained yesterday before we left. And then we got in late last night and, and trained this morning. So it's been a good week. Um, we've obviously, um, obviously been at home for a solid amount of time now, which is really nice. So yeah, we're all prepped and ready to go and ready to um, ready to have a response from Portland now into North Carolina. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. Remember to use your raise your hand function. Um, Billy, go ahead. Hey, Joe, I can I you. get uh, permission to record? I'm sorry. Can I get permission to record? Yes, one second. Sorry about that, Billy. Hey, you're okay. How co hey, Coach, how's it going? I'm well. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I just wanted to get your thoughts on how it's been collaborating with Juan so far, getting him up to speed, and maybe get your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, congrats to Juan and his family. We're super excited to welcome him to Houston. Uh, obviously, been talking to Juan for a while now. Um, and yeah, I, I speak to him pretty much every day, uh, keeping him in, 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 in tabs and in touch with uh, what is going on with the team, what our preparation looks like, um, kind of filling them in on everything every day, which is, it'd be nice to get him here. So it's not done virtually, but yeah, it's been great so far. Um, he's a very energetic and passionate person and he's going to be a great fit for Houston. Appreciate that. And last one for me, just wanted to get your overall thoughts on what the takeaways were from last game with the humbling loss and the overall takeaways going forward. Yeah, again, I mean, I think it happens in a season. It doesn't define the season. It's it's one game. Um, I think in the end, it, it was probably, um, it was a tough game. And I think we have to respond. And I know the character, like I've said, of this team. And I know we will will, will respond. And uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily define us. I think if you look at the goals as an early on goal, which is very unfortunate. Then there's a soft penalty, perhaps. Um, and then the third goal, obviously, we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit. So, again, it was our own doing. Um, and so that's nothing That's nothing that uh, we can't take care of and fix. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thanks, Billy. Matt, go ahead. Hey, Sarah, what was your reaction to Houston getting the World Cup? And how do you, how do you use this to help promote your organization. Yeah, I think this is super exciting for the city of Houston. It's a it's a soccer hotbed, as we know, and um, it's an amazing opportunity for for the club to um, you know draw on some fans. And I think it's again, it's it's super exciting. And I know that uh, I've already had people reaching out to me and my friend group trying to get us to get a, a saving pot going so we can buy tickets. So um, yeah, it's it's really exciting, and I'm sure I'll have people from. Uh, across in England trying to get over here as well on holiday for the World Cup. So it's super exciting for everybody and, and just for the city in general. It's, you know, it's a um, very diverse city and, and uh, it, I, I think it's a great, great, great that the fact that Houston are, are getting a host. What is the first thing you would tell your friends that say, hey, I want to come over and get tickets and such? What, what's the number one thing that you think Houston has going for it? Again, I think it's just uh, the weather's lovely, uh, which is always nice. Um, again, I think it's a diverse city. It's, it's got everything. It's got everything that you need. And so, again, great facilities, great weather, uh, the people, hospitality of, the, of the, the Texas people. And so, again, I think it's, it's really exciting for the city. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Theo, go ahead. Hi, Sarah. Um, it's been obviously a busy week for the Dash as a club and Houston, the city, as Matt just said, has that noise, the Amaros arrival, the news of the World Cup been something you've had to manage in regards to the group being like, hey guys, we've got to focus on this game or has it been maybe about kind of bringing some of those topics in to, to fire people up? Yeah, I think again, our focus has been North Carolina and we've, we've obviously, we know we're, we're all professionals here and we have to, we have to take into consideration what the, what the focus is. But yeah, there's, you know, obviously I've been speaking of one a lot um, just to kind of catch him up to speed. And um, that's obviously something that I've taken on. And uh, like I said, we're really excited to get him here. And uh, I just want to thank Ted and Jess and uh, the club in general, and the leadership council for their, uh, their support over the last eight weeks. It's been amazing. Did you see much of the reaction to Amaros's appointment in, and, and from the fans? Uh, no, I didn't. I try and stay off social media, to be honest. 
yeah, I, I just wondering if you had anything to say because it, it's been interesting to see how much the fans have taken to you. And this week, I think it's been sort of it was just such an outpouring of support for you and, and, and adoration. And I was wondering if you saw any of it. Uh, to be honest, I've tried to, like I've told you before, I think uh, I've tried to just be level-headed and stay in the middle with everything. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate the support from the fans. I think it has been unbelievable. I've spoke to a lot of them in, a lot of them in the stadium, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm really excited to be in Houston and the journey has no port for me in Houston. I'll be here as long as the club wants me and uh, super excited to continue to build this together with Juan. Um, on, on the team for Sunday, uh, is, did Sophie and Michelle travel and are there any other uh, injury updates? They did travel, yes. The only other one is uh, Brie Vizzoli is out with an illness. Okay. Um, will there be any minute restrictions or kind of different types of usage considering we've got an international break and will the Mexican-Canadian players be not here for the July 1st game? Uh, we definitely have to evaluate the in terms of like kind of the upcoming game in terms of injuries or you know kind of like people that have had high minutes we definitely have to manage that I think it's kind of a it's kind of a game by game thing we kind of have to see where what that looks like as the game progresses but um yes as far as I'm aware the um Canadians and and, and Maria will be will be gone after this game cool thanks so much for your time Sarah and uh, good luck on Sunday thanks Theo appreciate you if there are any no more questions for Sarah we'll give back give her back some of her time um, all right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Good luck tomorrow. Um, safe travels back. Thanks, everyone. Um, it's weird because we actually had like a full week to kind of like prepare for this. Um, last week or so with the three games, it was back to back to back. So it's been nice having kind of some time to um, reset, especially after um, last game. So I think it's been really good. Um, we were able to, you know, analyze that game and then kind of push it in the past and move on, um, which has been really good. Um, I think the vibes are good going into tomorrow. You know, we really, we want to st start out strong um, and kind of get some momentum and um, yeah, walk away with three points. Awesome. Reminder, everybody, if you have any questions for Marissa, use the raise your hand function. Um, Marissa, obviously you you came in um, during the off season, kind of become an important part of, of our midfield. Um, can you just walk us through what it's been like to kind of get, um, you know, acclimated with the back line and, you know, kind of being that connective tissue right there? In the yeah, um, it's been great. Um, you know, I think our back line has been doing so well these past, um, you know, the past couple of games. Um, and it's been really fun, especially being in the midfield with Sophie. Um, she's such an incredible player and just, I've been able to learn so much from her. Um, so it's been good. And I think we've started to kind of build, um, a connection throughout, um, the past couple of games. So that's been really fun to kind of see that blossom. Um, but no, it's been really great. Um, again, we're just taking it day by day, um, and learning, growing together. Awesome. Thank you so much, Billy. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Just wanted to get your thoughts on the World Cup as well. I know it's been talked about quite a bit, but I just wanted to see what it means to you personally. Uh, 2026 you're talking about? Correct. Yeah, I think it's really exciting um, for Houston um, to, re to be one of the cities to host um, the, some of the games for the World Cup. Um, I think it's great for the for the community, um, for obviously, you know, the Dash and the Dynamo. Um, but I think, yeah, for the overall community, um, it's great that, you know, such an incredible event is going to be right in our backyard, basically. So um, I think it's really fun, really exciting. Thanks for your time. Matt, go ahead. And Marissa, Sarah was saying she's already getting people calling from England talking about getting tickets. <laughs> come over here on a holiday what uh, what what's the main thing you would tell uh, someone who said hey I'm coming to Houston to see a girl in four years what what would you tell them uh about Houston what stands out to you the, the good thing um it's really hot here so that's the first the first thing I would say so be ready for that um but no I think Houston is such a unique city um you know just so diverse um and you know, obviously it's a huge city, a lot of people. Um, I think there's a lot to do, um, a lot of good food. Um, 
no, I think it's, I think it's a great city. Um, and yeah. <laughs> okay. What, uh, what can you do or how can your organization take advantage of this fact? The buildup is going to be four years. You yeah. know, I think that after the 94 World Cup, that's how that's kind of what spurred MLS, I yeah. believe, if I remember right. We didn't, uh, you know, those of us in Houston thought we pretty got the shaft that year because uh, we didn't get the host. Dallas did. But uh, how do you take advantage of the increased interest? in your favorite sport to uh, to help your club? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question. I think soccer in general in the U.S. Um, over the years, um, both men and women's, um, is growing. And I think that this is something that, um, an event that can further that progress. Um, like you said, we have a four-year lead up. Um, so it's not just about, you know, 2026, that moment. It's the lead up. It's how can we get people excited? How can we p- get people, you know, wanting to buy tickets um, once that becomes an option? So I think it's um, a really unique opportunity that Houston um, has. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Theo, go ahead. Hi, Marissa. Um, I have quite a funny question off the bat, if that's okay, to ask about your hair. Is that a- <laughs> Is that okay? I was, okay. Um, just because it's down. I know. And I'm so used to seeing you with this sort of legendary top bun. I know. That I think is kind of an underrated thing that's been doing a bit of the rounds with some of the Dash fans because you're such a fantastic top bun that's so big. I know. It's um, so funny because usually my hair doesn't stay, but for some reason it's been staying. I have to use like three hair ties, but it's been nice not have it like on my back in the heat. <laughs> I was going to say, what's the secret to the top bun? Because I think yeah. you're one of the biggest top buns in the late in the end of your well, It feels like a bit of a, 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 a like a style choice, or, or maybe it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a performance choice. So I was curious. Well, it makes me look taller, so that's like the, like an advantage. Um, but it's two hair ties, and then obviously you have to have the scrunchie. So fantastic. Well, thank you for clarifying that because I, I only just it was kind of on my long list. There's often things I want to know, like why Ali Prysock has a short so small why does Michelle wear one white cleat one black cleat and I've always wanted to know right. about uh, Marissa's top bun yeah um on on on, on the pitch though uh, yeah I was curious you know you you've 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 slot into this team really well you've you've been putting in a lot of good good minutes um Rachel's obviously already been away Michelle was out last week Sophie took a rest and on the horizon is is, is much more big names going to be out are you, Marissa, feeling any extra pressure or, or kind of delighted to have a little bit more responsibility looking down the line the next six weeks, eight weeks? Yeah, no, I think it's an opportunity for all of us to kind of like step up um, maybe into some new um, roles that maybe we're not um, used to. But um, I think it's a great opportunity for um, all of us to kind of embrace that and, um, you know, work together. Um, when we have players that are out. And I think um, we're more than capable of it. So um, we just have to do it. How has the mood been around the camp um, in regards to preparation for Sunday, considering it's been like a very busy news week? Obviously, we've already talked about the World Cup, but Juan obviously joining the club. Um, has it been kind of like, has it been a buzz around the group? Has it been about just kind of blocking some of the noise out and focusing on the game? Yeah, uh, obviously like a lot going on outside, but um, I think we're really just focusing on getting the result tomorrow. Um, That is definitely like top priority, um, walking away with three points. Um, So obviously with everything else going on, it's exciting, it's fun, um, but we have to stay focused on what our goal is and that is winning tomorrow. When, when we spoke to Jessica O'Neill this week, she talked a little bit about some of the players having a li- kind of a bit of input, a bit of communication with the interim hire. What was your point of view from the player side in regards to getting that person in, how long they would be here and kind of that whole process? Yeah, I think we're all really excited. Um, I think it's um, a perfect time to kind of have someone transition in, you know, halfway through the season. Um, so I think we just have to continue to take it day by day. Um, it's a, it's a transition period. It's a learning period. Um, but I think at the end of the day, we're all in it together. Um, and we just have to stick with that. Um, and last one for me, uh, first game in a while coming off a loss. 
Um, has that affected preparation uh, this week at all? Um, not necessarily. Like I said, we actually had, you know, a couple more days to, um, you know, sort some things out, whereas previously it was kind of back to back. So it was tough to really, um, you know, find the time, the extra time to um, prepare. So I think it's been good this week. You know, we went over film from Portland, um, you know, areas that we needed to improve on. And yeah, now we're just focusing in on on ourselves and what we need to do to win tomorrow. Thanks so much for your time, Marissa, and good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Matt, do you have another question? Yeah, Marissa, it's Father's Day weekend. Um, did your dad teach you the game? Did your mom teach you the game? <laughs> what, uh, what, what thoughts do you have on, uh, is your dad going to be at the match tomorrow? I mean, I, those are the kind of questions I have on, on Father's Day weekend. No, well, first off, have happy Father's Day to everyone out there. But uh, no, my dad won't be there tomorrow. Um, but no, actually, it was one of my neighbors um, down the street who kind of introduced me to soccer. Um, there's like really no soccer, prior soccer experience in either sides of uh, my family. But um, I kind of fell in love with it, um, as did my younger sister. And it's kind of been something that has bonded um my entire family so yeah did you I know you went to you went to Northwestern right mm -hmm. uh, did you grow up in Chicago no Michigan Michigan so uh Michigan or Michigan State Michigan State oh that's, 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 that's <laughs> nothing wrong with that so uh so your family probably football fans um yeah my dad um grew up um, playing hockey and ended up coaching um, hockey for a little bit. So I'd say um, kind of a hockey fan, kind of an everything sport fan, family. So getting back to Father's Day weekend, even though he didn't teach you the game, you learned it from your neighbor. I mean, how have, have athletics and, uh, and your relationship with your dad, has it, has it been you able to sit back and watch a Spartan game together or What's the yeah. relationship been like that? Yeah, of course. Um, kind of like I said, it's been something that my entire family has been able to, um, you know, kind of bond over. You know, growing up, we weren't taking like family vacations. We were taking like soccer trip vacations. And that was um, kind of how we spent our time together. So um, it's definitely a, the game has definitely as much joy as it as it brings me, it also brings so much joy to my parents, to my sister. So it's, it's something really special, um, to my entire family. And, um, yeah. So what was your dad like, Marissa, what, what are you doing over here? Kicking this ball around I mean, what are you doing <laughs> yeah. with your hands? What, and then did he get on board as like, Marissa, this is oh, yeah. on here. What? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, my parents are, I'd say obsessed with <laughs> watching soccer now and, um, you know, they'll watch previous games and they just love it now. So, um, you know, I think whatever my sister and I chose to do, they would have supported us um, no matter what. So, um, yeah, they are, but they are obsessed with soccer now. So, <laughs> that's a very good thing. Thanks, yeah. Melissa, for your time. Yeah, of course. Awesome. We will end with that. Thank you for your time, Marissa, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Tell me to move.